rest for the men, the women, and the children of this caravan. Kids like eight-month-old Kenny, three-year-old Lenny, and 10-year-old Alexander waking up in this public plaza after an eight-hour walk yesterday. We've been walking with them, Hallie, for over two days now, and we've already started to see those signs of exhaustion. Yesterday, a caravan organizer fainted before our cameras. She was whisked away, unresponsive in a car. We called 911, and thankfully, we checked in on her last night, and she was doing okay. But a man also died yesterday, Hallie. He fell off one of those moving trucks because this journey is so grueling that these families are trying to get on whatever vehicles they can to ease the journey. Now, as you said, there's been a lot of myths about that caravan, and I want to help debunk some of them for our audience here since I'm in the thick of it. When we talk about caravan organizers, the folks you see behind me, Hallie, we're talking about a group called Pueblos Sin Fronteras. They have been escorting migrants through Mexico long before President Trump. Then finally, the president mentions criminal elements within the caravan. Who are these people? A lot of young men yesterday told me when you have a mass of 7,000 people, it's impossible not to have a few bad apples. But for them, it's about safety in numbers. So here is the caravan breakdown according to the local Chiapas government. We're talking about 7,233 people total, Hallie. That's over 2,500 men, over 1,000 women, over 1,000 boys, and over 1,300 girls. And as you said, today will be a day of rest for them. Tomorrow they plan to keep on moving north. And again, a grueling journey from what we have witnessed so far. Hallie?